good and pleasant for brethren to dwell together in unity. So if any of you aren't in unity, you can leave now. We'll give a few minutes. <laughs> God doesn't like factionism. We don't either. Of course, there's no need for it, you see, because we've all been baptized into Christ and put on Christ, and we're all one bread. That's what the scripture says, and I frankly glory in that. So we welcome you to Refreshing Waters Renewal number two. And we hope it will not be the last. Now the purpose of these gatherings is precisely reflected in this, uh, these, this term, Refreshing Waters Renewal. We want this to be a time of spiritual refurbishment and strengthening in the Lord. No problems. If you've got a problem, bury it. Don't bring it. If something's troubling you, cast your care upon the Lord. Give it a try. We can guarantee before the week's over, uh, you'll go back and revisit your situation. It will look quite differently when your spirit is strong. So uh, that's the purpose of these gatherings. There are a number of gatherings uh, throughout the country, good gatherings, in which they deal with issues that have divided brethren. And we are, we are supportive of all of those gatherings. This is a, a different type of gathering. It's one to strengthen God's people. On this renewal, we're focusing on the knowledge of God. Not exactly a common theme among men. Ah, very common in the Word of God. The knowledge of God, not objective in this, is the same as all of these gatherings, is to clarify the nature and the content of the gospel of Christ. We figure if you can understand the gospel and understand God, well, frankly, I can't think of anything that could be more difficult than that to understand. The psalmist said, In thy light shall we see light. That is to say, when you see God as he is, and the gospel as he is, and the great benefits that he has given us as they really are, everything else clears up and becomes at least as plain as we're capable of discerning. So we're going to focus on the good knowledge of God. The means we're going to use is to preach. God's ordained to the purposes of preaching. Ah, that's a revolutionary thing. Some folk think God's ordained to the foolishness of study. Well, that's not what the word says. It says that the foolishness of preaching, that's someone that sees it, tells it. That's what preaching is. Someone that comprehends it, proclaims it, and announces it. So we want to report what we've seen no more. We ask our speakers only to preach what they know and to declare what they have seen. And God will put it, of course, marvelously together. And through discussion. In discussion, we're going to ask you to contribute what you've seen on these subjects. And God will bring it all together in a marvelous way. See, all of you that are in Christ Jesus have seen something and understand something that the rest of us need to hear. Uh, don't take for granted that we know it. Don't take for granted that the aspects of the glorious gospel of Christ and the knowledge of God that you've seen are common to everybody. They may not be at all. You may have a very valuable view of the kingdom of God that we need to hear. So we're going to encourage you to do that. And by personal thought and meditation. Now we'd like after the gatherings break up and the sub-gatherings that take place after the formal dismissal, there'll be a number of subgroups. We like to sanctify the local restaurants as much as possible by holding conclaves in these organizations that are suited for business. Uh, after those have broken up and you retire at night, it would greatly delight our souls if the thoughts of your heart and the meditations of your heart and the words of your mouth would be acceptable to God. If you could go to sleep at night and your sleep would be and rest would be sweet before God. We, we target that. And, uh, that God and you, thinking these things over, can refine them. And perhaps you will see some new uh, view and nuance of these truths that the rest of us are not going to be able to share it with us in the following day. So that's the method we've chosen to deal with these truths. Now the knowledge of God, as we've said, is a, uh, it's a very common subject in Scripture. Of course, you see, I used to have a, a different agenda when I read the scripture. I had a theological template that I put on the Bible. And uh, this wasn't in the template. It was a black spot there and it blotted it out. 
Now just think of some of the things. We're going to cover some of these in this. The Word of God says about the knowledge of God, it says that God desires to be known. That's a fresh thought. If God wants to be known, then we should pursue knowing Him. And uh, that Jesus Christ is the means to the knowledge of God. You can't know God independently of Jesus. And Jesus wants you to know Him too. In fact, He's ready to expound God to you. And uh, that the riches of the knowledge of God, you are never as rich as when you know God. There's something about that that compensates for all of the limitations of life. Now, a lot of people here, no doubt, have experienced some difficult circumstances and are going through, as the scripture would say, the straits of Magellan. Hard times. You'll find some riches here in the knowledge of God that will help to go through the difficulties that you're navigating. And that this is life eternal, that they might know God. Now I'm interested in eternal life. Think of that. And uh, eternal life is uh, intricately associated with the good knowledge of God. We escape the pollutions of the world, the scripture says, through the knowledge of God. So folks that don't know God haven't escaped. They may have a clean life. They may appear holy. But if they don't know God, they haven't escaped. But if they do, they have. And that's a glorious truth to know. And we have grace and peace are multiplied to us through the knowledge of God. That's going to be expounded. You do want a lot of grace and peace. Say, these are wondrous spiritual commodities. Perhaps some of you in the past that have not talked a lot about grace and peace. Some, some agendas, you know, in organized religion don't have place for grace and peace. They aren't too important. But when you're fighting the good fight of faith, and you're running the race to glory. You need a lot of grace and you need a lot of peace. And you can get all you want through the knowledge of God. No limitation. Amen. This is an open-ended kingdom. You can come as close as you want to come. Have as much as you want. All the limitation is on the flesh side. On the earth side. Not on the heaven side. So we want to encourage you there. And everything that pertains to life and godliness has been given to us through the knowledge of him, the scripture says. So if you need it to get from here to there, God has it, and you can have it through the knowledge of God. And we cast down, 2 Corinthians 10 says, the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God, don't forget, that. through God they're mighty, to the casting down of strongholds and every high thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So Satan has an arsenal that's designed to inhibit you knowing God. And we want to become experts in throwing those things down. And to increase in the knowledge of God. There's no plateau. There really is no plateau. You'll come to no point where you just uh, finally arrive. And we want to encourage you to just press on and further into the kingdom of God. Uh, think of this. We know him who hath said the scriptures. We know him. It's good to know the author of the book. In fact, it greatly clarifies it, as a matter of fact. The role of Jesus in the exposition of God. That's going to be a great message. Of Jesus said, no man knows who the Father is, but the Son, and he to whom the Son will reveal him. Well, by the grace of God, you can be that person. Marvelous truth. And it's still Jesus is anxious to reveal him. And of course, in this promise, the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the Lord. Now, just that's just a little prelude to illustrate to you that there is a lot about the knowledge of God in Scripture. Almost everyone that has seen this and talked about it has said, you know, I read these things, but somehow they didn't stand out like that to me. So this, we're intending to make the knowledge of God bold print. Take it out of the lower case and put it in the upper case so that when you read the Word of God, this stands out to you as something that can advantage you. Uh, we have a number of speakers here. Now, these aren't uh, the, everything these men do, not by any stretch of imagination. My brother Charles Gresham is, has an educated background, edu background education. Brother Fred Blake is an editor. Brother J. Irvin Waters is a preacher. He's Ed Waters is a preacher. And actually, he used to be a debater. And it's my understanding that there are a number of people that I've been rejoicing, and he no longer is. <laughs> And Brother Dallas Burdett, he is a preacher and etc. All of these men are greatly gifted individuals. Brother Leon Bates is a 
is disguised as a businessman. He acts as a king and a prince, a priest of God. But some folk in Texas think he's a businessman. <laughs> now, Brother Roderick Kaufman, he's not going to be able to be here to wait this evening. Brother Roderick Kaufman is a South African Zulu. Now, he, I don't think he preaches with spear in hand, but it might be your advantage to be alert. <laughs> and Brother Harold Key is a preacher uh, from Texas that has paid his dues. So he's really had a, a breakdown, and Brother uh, Larry wants to pick him up. He's close by here, but you'll enjoy meeting him. A very keen, uh, thinking individual. Brother L. Stoner is an elder at our fellowship at home and also is, uh, has a background in education and in the uh, uh, commercial world. Brother David Fennessy, who should be here at any time, also is a preacher with an educated emphasis uh, in college work in his background. Now, you see, there's not a common thread other than preaching in these men, and that's the thing that I want you really to see. It's the thing that brings commonality to these, is the person's insight into the things of God. They're not really interested in earthly credentials. And some of these men do have some impressive earthly credentials, but after all, doctor and titles like that are just a way of distinguishing one worm from another, if I understand. And we have some uh, leaders, whether that's Brother William, uh, Zach Waite, and Brother Phil Pope will be leading some discussions. And both of these men are <coughs> ministers of the Word of God. Now, just one last view of this. Frankly, I have been kind of enthused thinking about this, the knowledge of God. It's like a multi-faceted jewel. No one of us knows everything about this, but all of us know a little something about it. And I would encourage you to perhaps know a great deal more than you think you know about this, and we want to highlight it. Uh, Brother Waters, a preacher and a debater who has been in the arena of intellectual conflict. Uh, Brother Fred Blake is an editor who earned his bread as a printer. Uh, Brother Albert Stoner, an elder who has educated it with language in the, as in the background. Brother Charles Gresham, an educator. Brother Harold Key, a preacher with an extensive education in the theological world. Brother Bates, a businessman. I believe it's chemistry. Was that my right in that? an education background in chemistry, Brother Hoffman, who has an uh, educated background he's developing now in theology, <laughs> Brother Burdett, I believe in insurance has been involved, myself in the computing world, Brother Fantasy in education. I can guarantee you there's not a theological or an institutional religious organization in the world that would glean people, uh, expertise from people like this. It doesn't look like they're qualified, but you will find that they are. That what they're bringing is unique perspectives to the knowledge of God from these very backgrounds. And the thing that made it, has made us common is not where we went to school. It's not where we went to church. It's not what books we've read that have been written by men, or our expertise in language, or our history, or some other ology. The thing that has brought us together